Well, welcome to the There's More podcast. We are being joined today by Robin Johnson. She's actually the uh, f- director of dire- operations. Thank you. She basically tells all of us what, what to, to do. do. We're so happy. <laughs> yeah, director of operations for Be Still Ministries. Kind of joined us pretty recently, but we've been friends with Robin for forever. We love talking to our friends because we are, you know, just so aware of each other's journeys. And mm-hmm. so God has really brought um, this precious woman that we're going to introduce you to. Um, on a journey of really discovering um, freedom and finances Mm -hmm. and in wealth and what generosity really means in scripture. You know, is it this thing of I have to give 10% like, you know, like just even freedom from what does tithing really mean? So Robin, thanks so much for coming and being willing to just share this, uh, what God has been teaching you. Oh, thank you guys for the invitation. It's a real privilege to be here. And I just have to say, Working at Be Still with you guys <laughs> has exceeded my expectations. Oh. I knew it was a great gift for me. So thank you for that, Rachel mm. and Karen. Oh, no. my gosh. You're the ultimate gift. I mean, yeah. I feel like I say your name a hundred times a day. I'm like, Robin <laughs> and Robin and Robin. I'm so happy for Robin. <laughs> so, Robin, start us out. Tell us um, kind of the journey that God has taken you on that's just opened your eyes. I know you're super passionate about this topic, and I love the way God just kind of puts this on people and mm-hmm. says, I want you to be passionate about this so you can spread that passion to others. Yeah, uh, sure. So I grew up in the church and my husband and I got married very young. We were both pastor's kids. So we had the basic understanding about money and we were both in finance for our careers. So we understood the practical part of money pretty well, budgeting and not spending more than you make and things like that. But we really struggled, I think, on the investment side, retirement, that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. really struggled. And about five years ago, in that particular area, we had a huge financial crisis. Um, I'm talking huge. And basically, we had spent 40 years um, trying to do the right thing for money and things like that. And in an instant, it was gone, Mm -hmm. every bit Mm -hmm. of it. And so that was... um, that was a big rock for us, a big deal in our lives. Yeah. So it created obviously a very practical problem. What are we going to do mm-hmm. moving forward about our future? Mm-hmm. Um, there was intense emotional trauma. Yes. There yes. was lack of confidence. There was shame. Right. There was anger. I mean, just the uh, overwhelming emotions that we had to deal with. And then, of course, we had the theological issue now. It's like, what's God's truth about this? What, you know, our, is this, how does he see us now? What's the, what's our future look like? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I just decided, you know, after I got over the initial, it took a while. Mm-hmm. I just decided, I think the Holy Spirit gave me just this tenacity. And it's like, all right, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be intimidated by money anymore. Right. I'm going to just go search, research. I, I'm not, this was not more of the practical budget and how to get out of Mm -hmm. debt thing. And those are super important. But for me, this was a kingdom issue. I could tell. So I just sat down and I asked the Lord, I said, Holy Spirit, you're going to have to teach me um, about this. What is it I'm missing here? And what, what's the path forward? And I purposed in my heart not to read any books that I was just, but because I'm a huge reader and Mm -hmm. I love them. And I do have five on my list that I'm about to order and read on this topic. But the first step I made is is I just went to the scriptures and I'm still there, still doing a lot and learned about what God had to say about money. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know there's this myth that I I consider it a myth that God speaks about money more than anything. He does talk a lot about money, Mm -hmm. but if anything, he talks more about the kingdom than anything else. He uses money to teach us about the kingdom. And he also wants to teach us about money. So um, that's what I, that was the path I started down was just getting into the word and seeing what God said, because money is a gospel issue. It is. It's not a worldly issue. It is a gospel issue. And I wanted to see what he had to say. It's one of the best ingredients the Lord uses to teach us about his kingdom and his treasure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Robin, I heard, um, I, I told this, we had a team meeting on Monday and I said, you know, in this book I'm reading by Jim Baker, it's like how heaven invades your finances. I'll, I'll get the title. We'll put it in the show notes, but he said, money is the kindergarten of the spiritual life. And I was like, really? I mean, that was kind of like, 
I don't know. I kind of was like, I, I think the brakes just like totally yeah. stopped when I read that in the in the book because I was like, boy, that feels like I feel like I'm not even remotely like where I need to be thinking about money. Right. And if he's calling that kindergarten, I'm like, I've missed some steps. Right. So, yeah. Tell us some steps that we might be missing on the whole. Yeah. I mean, all of it, Robin, just keep going. <laughs> I'm sorry. I interrupted. <laughs> I'll tell you how, the, so I'm very pragmatic and practical. You guys know that, yeah. but I'm also deeply spiritual. Yeah. And so it's so funny that the Lord kind of put it together for me like this. He, he put it together in two categories, treasure management and generosity. Okay. That's how I view my, my journey with money. So I've got treasure to manage because we all know the scripture says he gives us resources for our needs and for our enjoyment. And then he also talks a lot about generosity. Yeah. So that's how I look at God's the perfect mix of and balance of treasure management and generosity. He's wonderfully generous. And at the same time, he's incredibly good at treasure management. And treasure management is what I like to call it. It's financial stewardship is a term we're more used to hearing. Yeah, yeah. So we, from him, lessons from him, we learn to be wise managers of the resources he's given us and extravagantly generous. So the first thing I had to really, I had to get settled in some foundational truths. And the first one was God wants us prosperous. Yes, absolutely. You know, I grew up with, <laughs> sometimes there was a lot of teaching going around that it was wrong to be prosperous. Right. That's not true. It's he's, he provides Seed and bread for the farmer in the same way he provides for us, Paul tells us. He wants to provide and increase our resources. Yeah, yes. And he has no problem with us having money, but he's most interested in our hearts about the money. Right. Yeah. 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 So that was one thing I had to really get understand, understanding that prosperity is not bad. It's right. fine. And what's and one of those, what are one of those things where your heart about the money was off? Just curious, like uh, where, where did that go off, like off track kind of? Um, I think it came from a couple of things. First of all, when you're talking about your money for your future, our daily money was fine. But when you're talking about money for your future, right. a couple of things come up, anxiety and wor worry. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not sure you're going to have enough for your needs. And there's this scarcity mentality yes. which is so off for the kingdom yeah. that you're not sure there's going to be enough. And so you worry about that. So God had to, he had to deal with that scarcity mentality for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what, where it, he started. And so how did he deal? Like, was it more like he was revealing like the roots of where that came from? Or was it more just like, here's the word and I'm going to believe that in the kingdom, there's unlimited resources and he's going to show me how to access that. Like what was there any kind of a defining not there may not be. I mean, it may just be just that you just received the truth and that was that was enough. I'm just kind of curious. I think the way the Lord ministers to me mostly and and, and transforms me is through his word. Mm -hmm. And I have had gotten revelation about a lot of things, but just in the area of money, I just had a mindset that I wasn't, I wasn't able to figure it out or do it, understand it well enough. Mm. So he dealt with that and said, that's ridiculous that I he, absolutely, he can guide me in all things. But I really did not have obviously a understanding that God would be my provider. Oh right. man. We, That's I mean, a I, big one, oh, y'all. I, I mean, it's humongous. It's yeah. humongous. And I, yeah. I, you know, I think about the widows, like y'all, this is like, yeah. I mean, for the people that we minister, women and widows, I feel like we carry this. I know men carry it, but I feel like we just, uh, a lot of times because we aren't like the breadwinner right. per se, it's mm -hmm. like, for some reason I get like transferred all of the worry that comes with not being the what is that it's I don't so know weird. I don't know I'm the I'm I've totally that was to it that. for me I yeah I hesitated to say that but I just felt like I'm just gonna let my husband David worry about that I don't want to know about it because I don't feel competent in it for some reason and when this happened 
I mean, it happened to both of us. <sighs> and so I just decided I need to take ownership and I need to understand mm. what it is that's keeping me from really stepping into the revelation that I can tr- manage treasure. Yeah. Just as well as any as a man can. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So about that. Um, and he's been faithful to show me, but I did have to settle it that God is my provider. That doesn't mean that I don't ever um, get off into worry. You can sure. hear the news of the day and things sure. like that, and you can get into that scarcity mentality and that worry about your future. But the biggest blocker to really understanding kingdom finances is that worrying about will we have provision for our future. Yeah. Wow. I mean, to me, it's yeah. a whole thing where the spirit of the Lord, as we talked about this in a, a different podcast, Robin, where the spirit is Lord, there's mm-hmm. freedom. And yeah. when we don't have freedom in our finances, it's because he's not Lord over that area mm-hmm. of our lives. Yeah. So I love that. So first is settle it in your heart that Abba is a good, good father mm-hmm. yeah. who will provide. Yeah. So that's number this, one. Tell us what your what's your what your next kind of piece of that journey was. Um, after I got settled in my heart um, about that, but he started taking me to the scriptures and taught me very quickly. If, if I understood that he's our provider and he does want us prosperous then it really all landed on generosity because generosity is the pathway to prosperity. That's so true. Say that again. Build a bunch of, get prosperous and then be generous. That's the world's mindset. Yeah. Okay, so so generosity is the pathway to prosperity. What does that Mm -hmm. mean? Because that sounds uh, otherworldly, which it is. It does. Mm-hmm. That's the fun part, though. Yeah. You know, this so is, this I, is where it gets fun it right is. here. I mean, this mm-hmm. is yeah. it. If you get this right, this is where mm-hmm. your life will be unlocked. Mm-hmm. Truly. I mean, shame, all the other things, but this is it. Yeah, I think I had to come overcome a few things when I really realized that generosity was what the Lord wants to teach us about. Um, the first thing was, like I said before, generosity is not a condition of the bank account. No, it's a condition of our heart Mm -hmm. because you can have wealthy, stingy people. You can have wealthy, generous people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have poor, stingy people, and Mm -hmm. you can have poor, generous people. Right. So the bank account balance is not what this is about. This is a heart condition. Absolutely. I wanted the Lord to talk to me about my heart. So He's always that's what He's always dealing with, right? That's how He changes us through our heart. He Mm -hmm. gives us understanding that settles, and we change. So that was the first thing. And I will tell you, the thing that helped me realize one of the scriptures, I just found it in our, was taught it in Corinthians that there was a church that was in extreme poverty, but because of their understanding of the Lord and their overflowing joy of the gospel that was being brought to them, it, oh, it just kind of welled up into rich generosity. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we don't have to be rich to be generous. We just have to have the right heart for it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think, honestly, Robin, it's harder for people who are rich. Oh, 100%. I mean, which is just. I mean, gosh, so go to bas- go on a mission trip and you'll you'll discover that. Well, uh, oh, you know, absolutely. I mean, chicken. to me, it's harder for Americans. I mean, we're in the top one percent, like almost all of us mm-hmm. of the whole world's economic earnings. And mm-hmm. yet yeah, we are one of the most generous nations, but it's such to the fraction. So how does that work, Robin, that generosity is the gateway to prosperity? Like, how does I get that our hearts are are part of this or, or the equation, right? But then Mm -hmm. why would generosity actually lead to prosperity? Is it just prosperity of heart or is it actual tangible physical prosperity? Oh, I think it's both. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's both. Um, I think one of the things, too, if I can back up just a minute, that you also we also have to remember, because to get the heart, we have to we have to kind of undo some mess. And number one. Giving is not obligatory in the new covenant. Mm-hmm. Right, it's voluntary. Yes, it's 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 something that is an overflow of our gratitude and devotion to God. It's not a mechanism for blessing. Right, we're blessed because of our faith in Jesus. Yeah, um, and our position in Christ. Yeah, 
Um, and then the other, the other big one too is that God's not asking us to give it all away. I know some people get really uptight about that, um, but he's, it's very scriptural to set aside for your future. It tells us that. I think I wrote the scripture here. The wise man saves for the future, right. but the foolish man spends whatever he gives. So it's very, mm. very safe and normal to um, provide for our future and as far as retirement. But we just have to realize that there are some people, we've heard the stories in the kingdom, that people, the Lord asked them to sell everything and go, Heidi Baker, Heidi and Roland Baker. Mm -hmm. And if God calls you to do that, there's going to be the faith and the grace on it. Right? Yes, so totally. We don't have to, be, I don't have to be afraid and say that God's asking us to give it all away because the scripture says he gives bread, he gives us bread to eat and seed to sow. So we don't, he's not asking us to give away our bread, but he's also asking us not to eat our seed. Mm. I, I, that is so huge to me. I remember uh, yeah. a few years ago kind of mm -hmm. hearing that and learning that and, and all of a sudden the, the lights coming yeah. on that I do get to enjoy, you know, the fruit of, of labor. Mm -hmm. I, I do get to eat. In other words, that's the eating of the bread that it provided to buy the bread and I get to eat it. I get to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's satisfied. You know, there's a lot of goodness that comes from it. But I also yeah. don't want to eat my seed. There is there is a portion of my finances the Lord is is saying, "Hey, this is gonna this is gonna bless you so powerfully, and it's gonna bless others. And this is the seed you get to sow that actually has a multiplication effect on it. Because what you eat doesn't multiply. What you give away, yeah. seed mm -hmm. has multiplication power. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. yes. And you can be eating and sewing at the same time. Yeah. I think this is, mm -hmm. you know, like when you invite people over, this is one of my big things. It's like, if I invite you over, you're not paying for dinner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, I know like a lot of times people are like, oh, well, then I'm like, you are not paying for dinner. I'm planting into you mm -hmm. when you come over to my house for dinner. And I'm also enjoying that as well. So I'm eating bread that I've provided for myself, mm -hmm. and yet I'm still planting in you. So I'm not asking mm -hmm. you to pay. It's, but that that's a little thing. But I think you can yeah. eat and plant at the same time. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, sorry, so that, I derailed that, you. Keep going. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, so generosity, the Lord taught me his heart on generosity, that it is a matter of the heart. And so, of course, I'm asking all the time the Lord to give me opportunities to be generous, but I just kept digging into the word. And I will tell you one of the, you know, sometimes when you're in the word, you think you kind of have an understanding, but it, you're just refreshing and reminding. And because we, we all, have, if we've been in the church for any amount of time, we understand the importance of giving. Um, but when I came across the parable of the shrewd manager, which I never understood before, it's in Luke 16 and realized there is generosity is one of the best ways to provide for our future. Because mm -hmm. remember, scarcity, scarcity mm -hmm. mentality is I'm not going to have enough for my future. So you're going to hoard and you want things so you'll have it. But in the kingdom, generosity is how we one of the best ways we prepare for our future. And that just kind of blew my mind. So can I just share with you? Please. please? Oh my gosh. It's such Teach a powerful me. statement. And yet mm -hmm. it's so contradictory to, <laughs> to yeah. laying up for your future. You know, oh, it's like, I okay, know. Wait, what? And the, I, I mean, this is the secret of the kingdom uh -huh. right here. It's it. This is it. So yeah, please unpack that for us. And remember, there's nothing wrong with planning for retirement. That's it's right. wisdom. Mm -hmm. But this is a kingdom principle that we we're always going to be learning. So in this parable, there was a manager. I mean, there was a master and he had a, a manager, a particular manager. And um, he found out, the master found out that he may not, that the manager was not doing right or something. I can't remember the exact details, but um, he was going to have to give an account. The manager was going to have to give an account for how he had handled the master's treasures. And he knew it was happening and he got nervous. So he went to all the accounts that owed the master. You know, he was, he was responsible for that and he wanted them to pay. And the way he got them to pay right away is he offered them a discount. He says, hey, you owe me, a, you owe the hundred thousand. I'll give you 50% off if you pay me right now. And he went and did that all around the kingdom that he was responsible for. And 
Then when he had to give an account to the master, the master commended him. I mean, like, just like, what? What are you talking about? But the, the, the point of the parable is that the manager used the master's resources to store up himself for himself a good future. And the reason he was storing up a good future is because now he had done all these favors and these people would pay, take care of him for the future. And so we get so caught oh, up in wow. that that's not how that works. But you, on a parable, you just take the nugget that God's trying to teach us out of it. And it was use the master's resources to secure for you a good future. That's the nugget of that story. Oh, wow. I always thought he was like the bad person. I did too. Yeah. I mean, I never even saw it as like a positive parable. It was always like a slap on the hand kind of interesting. Okay. So keep, so keep on. Okay, wow, so the, catching up. the manager, because he went in and he did the shrewd thing okay. by using, getting, giving discounts and stuff. So when he had to give an account, he was going to show everything's paid and things like that. You would think that the master would have just ripped him apart. Right. He was true. But he said, no, he, he, the pair, the meaning of the parable was he, he got praised for two reasons. First, he knew he'd be called to account. And he took it seriously. Okay. And secondly, he took advantage of his present position to arrange a comfortable future. Mm. So we can use our material resources right now for eternal good, mm. even though we can't bring them with us. I mean, it's just that's just blew my mind. Wow. wow. Well, in my so mind. generosity, every act of generosity we have has an eternal consequence yeah. for our future. Yeah, 100%. Well, it's so interesting because I don't think I ever considered he actually, the people were benefiting. They're getting, you know, having to pay back 50% on the dollar. Yes. So that he was actually being generous. Generous to them. I never, ever no, saw that. No, me that. neither. I thought it was like, you idiot. Me too. <laughs> I mean, like, you messed up. I, I, was, I wow. always thought he was taking from... The master. The master. Me too. Like, I always was like, well, the master, if they really owed this, and he's like, but it's also like you're giving grace to people. Uh huh. That it is. Owe That's what you. I was thinking too. Like it's like there's like such a grace factor in that hidden in that little treasure too. Wow, Robin. So not only when you're generous does it have a consequence for our this our future in this world because the Lord says the you know if I give you a little you manage it well you and you're generous I'm going to give you more and yes. more and more so now our future gets more and more right from a economics position but also our eternal future there is a consequence to our generosity in this life right in our future life yeah yeah timothy first timothy six also um uh, uh, supports this let me get it so i say it correctly it says remind the wealthy to be rich by the way wealthy there we're talking people that Remember, it's not the size of your yeah of your bank account. It's just that the God's p- providing you resources to manage mm-hmm. and to to be generous. So remind the wealthy to be rich and remarkable works of extravagant generosity, willing mm-hmm. to share with others. These spiritual investments, I love that phrase, will provide a beautiful foundation for their lives and secure for them a great future as they lay hands upon the meaning of true life. So that's another way where Paul told, was talking to Timothy. He says, look, we've got to have the right perspective of money, first of all, um, in this life. But we also, he's given us a little nugget there. It also matters in our future as well. So, yeah. you know, we're it, Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, God has set eternity in our hearts. Yeah, We live for eternal the eternal, mm-hmm. everything we're doing right now, bringing the kingdom to our sphere of influence, which you you guys do every single day in this ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, there's a reward for you. You don't do it for the reward, but you know it's going to have eternal consequences in your life and the people you touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, and I think, I mean, just looking mm-hmm. around last night, like I was telling Karen today, I was like, what if we... If we don't take up this, like what would we have missed if we hadn't have done? Because it is, 
I do think, Robin, like giving validity to how hard it is to shift into this, Mm -hmm. because this is a total mindset shift for most people that Mm -hmm. generosity leads to prosperity, because most of us, it's like spend, 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 and then give what's left. Right. Instead of like give, 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 and then spend what's left. Yeah. You know, it is. This is like, but that re-altering of your mind and your your processes and for us like our just fortitude to get things done like what that has laid up for thousands is just it's unbelievable and we can't we will never know ah so true can i tell you something else i saw that speaks to this um i you guys know i love studying everything through the lens of the covenants and i by the way that chad mansbridge podcast oh, gosh. if anybody listening hasn't heard it please go back and listen to it's it amazing um it helped me understand the gospel in general but so i decided when i was doing this study i'm also going to take some time and go look at money through the lens of each covenant that's neat robin the abrahamic covenant is just the gospel in advance it says in galatians yeah. so it's very much um we give from a place of gratitude we, we know that he's promise to bless us because of who we are, our identity. Mm -hmm. And then the old covenant tends to be where we get all of our theology from giving, which is not, not the best, Yeah. but here's one concept. I'd love to talk more about that, but I don't want to take up too time, but too much time, but let me tell you one concept. So we've all heard about the first fruits offering. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The first fruits. And when I studied that, and it's a very simple concept, you give God, the first and the best. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then it makes the whole rest holy. Does uh, that make sense? Yeah. So you give God the first and the best right. of your your resources. It, it makes has an everything on left the rest. Yeah. set apart for good for him and blessed and prosperous. Yeah. And mm-hmm. how many times, and I'm so guilty of this, that you kind of give systematically a little bit through the year, and at the end of the year, you're scrambling around. Oh, what should I, should I give some more? Is there some more to yeah, give? Yeah. So I made a little switch on that mm. a couple of years ago. And I'm just more intentional. I'm going to give God the first I and the best. I love that. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Because it, that's, it makes the whole batch. Remember in Romans, Gosh, it says, that's so uh, good. I'm like getting a... Yeah, because I we because December definitely for us tends to be kind of more our giving month. Yeah, most yeah. You know, and yeah. wow, what a what a shift. So, so the first is, what you set yeah. apart, your first part that you set apart is holy, actually has an eternal impact on the rest of what you bring in. Yeah, right. So Romans eleven sixteen says, if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy then the whole batch is holy. Mm, mm, That's great. So we're, we're basically, by doing, just following this simple spiritual principle, we're ask, we're saying, Lord, I'm giving you the first and the mm. best. And because you are so good, this is going to bless everything mm. that's left. Wow. Wow, that's good. Set it apart. You know, you. I want to bring up too what I, what I texted the both of y'all earlier this week because it, I, I feel like there's still unfolding revelation for what he's saying in it. But when the tithe was first instituted in the Old Covenant, or we also call it the Mosaic Covenant or the law, um, they were to set aside, you know, their their offerings to the Lord. But mm-hmm. it was for the purpose oh, yeah. of providing for them when they went three times a year, they went up to Jerusalem to ce- celebrate the festival, festival of the Lord. And it was to provide for their food and drink In the celebration. So what is the point of that? Like, what are you trying to say, Karen? What I'm saying is God was not saying, set this aside so I can take something away from you and test your heart to see if you're going to trust me. He was saying, set it aside so we can celebrate Celebrate. together. Oh my gosh. I was like, why (laughs) did I, have I never seen that? I I know. and And I will say that for me, it's because of the lens you bring about what you believe God believes about you and in, in relationship to your finances is what you'll read the scripture to say back mm-hmm. to you. And so yeah. if you think God is saying it to like 
you know, kind of penalize you or I'm testing you to make sure you're faithful to me, all that kind of thing. You'll you'll experience the word through those lens. Uh-huh. And so to hear that the tithe was actually for our benefit, mm-hmm. it was to provide for me. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. But again, they had to go first to get that to, to get. I mean, it's like there's such a there's such an action step on their part. Yeah. I mean, God's inviting us in, but like. You go first. That's right. I mean, first fruits. Uh huh. You have to put the plan in place to not want to steal from yourself. Yeah. On some level, you know. Hey, since you brought it up, Karen, can I just share the three quick things from the old covenant that I learned? Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, part of that was just what you said. So, in the old covenant, there were actually three tithes. So you had the tithe to the priests yeah. um, and the Levites, and that was something they did every year. And then you had this um, festival tithe that you were talking about. So the first tithe was for the, the priesthood, the teachers and all that. The mm-hmm. second tithe was actually for the body mm-hmm. to have the, what you just talked about, have the fellowship, the communion, the blessing of God's abundance. And then the third tithe was for the poor. Right. So if you add those up, that's more than 10%. (laughs) So we always think, well, they just tied 10%. No, they actually tied 10% and on the uh, the rest, and then between these other two ties, they were at least tithing 20%. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Amazing. And then they had had a free will offering as well, which was voluntary. So I'm just saying, that's why it's not really the greatest to get, if you want to take your theology of giving from the old covenant, then you start at 20%. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Oh yeah. And gross or net, Robin, this was the question in Sunday school back 25 years ago. Oh my gosh, that was so, I remember just being so guilty. I'm like, oh God, I don't want to tell anybody it's not gross. (laughs) If you really want to look at the old covenant and get what new covenant giving is all about, look at the free will offering. It was out of pure devotion and mm, thanksgiving, joy. gratitude, pure heart, whatever you wanted to give. Right. There was no limit, no a minimum, maximum. It's just whatever you wanted to give. That's mm. how we're called to give. Just give from a place of gratitude and understanding and confidence in who the Lord is. Um, and I know this is controversial, and I hope I don't. You can you can edit it out if you need oh, to. Stop. I love it. Well, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What's controversial? Oh, tie the mentality. Tie the mentality. Oh, um, you know, just yeah. always so, tie I, That was freedom for me. I was like, wow. 100%. I mean, it was always this measuring thing. Anytime oh, you're yeah. getting into measuring, you're pretty sure you're probably not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Robin, where do we start? I mean, like. What, how did this shift like your own personal giving with you and David? Like what, what, what's next? Like, what does all this mean? You know? Um, I think for me, it's always going on a path of, of revelation and understanding. So I started in the scriptures and look, Proverbs is full of just wisdom on how to deal with our finances. And then there's some key scriptures and like 1 Timothy 6, read that. That's a great resource if you want to start thinking about money. And then, of course, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 are the probably the most important. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the most important scripture I could give you an understanding would be Hebrews 13, 5. And it says, be content with what you have. Mm-hmm. Be content with what you have and don't. Don't fall into the trap of loving money because God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So start there. That is the most emphatic statement in the New Testament. Mm. Be content with you, with what you have, and don't fall into the trap of loving money and getting worried about money because God will never leave you or forsake you. Now, when he gives the most emphatic statement in the New Testament is around money. It's an eye opener to me. Yeah. So start with say, Lord, I'm I want to trust you as my provider. Whatever path he however he takes you on that path, you could be in lack. Same principle. You still still same principle is important. So that's where I would start was just 
let's say, Lord, let's talk. Or am I, am I trusting you for my future? Yeah. What is it that Jim Baker said? Um, worrying about your future is, oh, well, I put it down somewhere. Oh, now, I got it. Yeah. Oh gosh. It was so good. Yeah. I actually screenshotted it from, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was so great. Um, let's see if I can find it. Sorry, y'all. That's fine. We can, we edit, this, we can out. edit this out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see. Worry is temporary insanity because it's imagining a future without God. Mm. Yeah. And then the next one, what praise and worship is to God, anxiety and worry is to mammon. Both are a pledge of allegiance. I was like, those Say were. The, repeat those again. Yeah. So what praise and worship is to God, anxiety and worry is to mammon. Both are a pledge of allegiance. Wow. Jim Baker from and How Heaven is... Invades, Invades Your, The Love of Money. Okay. Um, How Heaven Invades Your Finances is the book that, that Jim wrote. But yeah, I mean, Robin, this is just, I mean, this is where it's at. I mean, it really, I mean, the Lord is obviously just. Um, I think reading that book, you know, highlighting that book through a, a sermon that we all heard a few weeks ago, I was just like, I don't know who this person is and I want to read this book. And he's doing like a seminar in September. I'm like, can I go to that? Wow. I mean, because I do, I do feel like we are Gosh, obsessed with treasure saving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we, I mean, we mildly obsessed. I mean, whole whole networks of people that's how they live their life is yeah. us being obsessed with how to store yeah, for the future right, right. and they're benefiting from it and yeah. so i'm kind of like wow there's just a reboot coming oh, i'm telling you like it is just like and and yeah. i do think robin that the lord is inviting us in to be a forerunner of this and it's mm-hmm. like i told the team on monday i said we cannot we cannot teach others what we have not been what we are not doing, you know, it's, yeah. it's not just to know it and read it in a book. It's like, Hey, I'm inviting you in to yeah. trust me in this, to trust that mm-hmm. generosity truly is the prosperity. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's where it is. Um, because mm-hmm. prosperity man gets the worst rap ever. I mean, I'm like, yeah. so it's so sad to yeah. me yeah. how it's been so perverted and messed up, but that's what the enemy wants. Mm-hmm. He wants prosperity to be messed up mm-hmm. because when it's messed up, we all get all like, mm-hmm. Oh, well that's a theology I can't partner with. Mm-hmm. It's like, Oh my gosh, this is like the theology of the kingdom. Right. And and the enemy has so perverted it because the lead the lead sentence on prosperity is generosity goes first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why. And also something you brought up, Rachel, that's so true when we were talking a few days ago, that scripture, Luke 16, 11, when we if we can be trusted with our worldly wealth, yeah. we can be trusted with true riches. Who doesn't want Amen. to be trusted with true? Yeah, I do more and more and more. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, and I think when anybody argues with the idea that God doesn't want to be generous towards us first is just look at the garden. They weren't put into the garden until everything had already been provided. Yeah. I mean, what a beautiful picture that is of his goodness, his lavishness, Mm -hmm. you know, towards them. You know, and I mean, look at the cross. Another yeah. example of complete lavishness. Yeah. In utter despair. Yeah. But yet what it meant. It's like, oh, yeah. gosh, Robin, will you pray for anyone who's listening today? Who's just like, I'm a financial mess. Like I can just hear people listen to this and mm-hmm. thinking it's too much. It's too big. I don't have a husband to help me. I feel alone. I mean, because this, this is like. This is foundational. I mean, this is deeply, just this is deeply seated in families and and generational bondage around money. I believe it is so true. And um, I will pray. I'll pray because if you're in a financial crisis or like we were, or you're just living, you know, day to day or in lack or something like this, this generosity can feel very overwhelming. Yes. And then on the other side of the coin. You could have just a huge amount of wealth and now feeling like, oh, what's my, what's my, what should I do with it? Yeah. I want to say this one thing. It takes what, faith to live in lack and trust the Lord to bring you to prosperity. And it takes faith mm-hmm. to live with a whole lot of money. Yeah. It's not, you're not going to get out of it. So I'm just going to yeah. pray that we can trust good, the Lord Robin. to work 
through whatever circumstances any of us are facing. Right. David and I are still working through this. Yeah. And when you got a couple, now you've got to be, you know, you've got to work through that part as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. so it's good. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to pray. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Father, I thank you for this message that was just kind of hidden to me all these years. I thank you that you reveal that you love to reveal the secrets of the kingdom mm -hmm. to your people. So, Lord, I just thank you for what you've revealed to me, to others, um, listening to Karen, to Rachel. And, Lord, I just pray for more, more mm -hmm. revelation, more understanding about uh, money It's a and your kingdom and how this all fits together. So, Lord, and I just bless every person listening right now that may be in lack mm -hmm. Lord, we just declare your scripture that says God wants them prosperous so they can be yeah. generous. Yeah. We just settle that. And yeah. Lord, I just pray you move mightily. Lord, if they need practical mm. help, bring it to them. If they need a heart to change, bring it to them. Show them. But Lord, if you if we take a step towards you, you will meet us there. So yeah. Lord, I thank you for that. And for the whole other end of the spectrum where people have were so blessed and just wondering, am I doing the right thing in the kingdom? Lord, first of all, I just pray you give them peace, no shame, mm -hmm. no condemnation. Are they doing this right, Lord? And I just say that they open their hands and we all just open our hands, Lord, and say, freely we've been given yeah, and freely we give. Thank you, Father. Lord, it's much more blessed to give than to receive. Lord, we receive just so thankfully what you've given us, but Lord, we want to be radically extravagantly generous because man i can just imagine the things that that would solve in our world mm -hmm. and how we could um expand the kingdom through it in jesus name amen amen, amen. 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 robin thank you so much